So I hope I've convinced you now that it is possible to stabilize different type of amino acid side chains at different places inside the membrane. But what we haven't talked about is how do they end up there in the first place and why can we insert them? Gunnar will talk more about membrane protein biogenesis, exactly how this protein happens, but here and at one other place, I'm gonna have like a 30 second background to it. So don't worry if you don't follow this. All proteins are created from a string of RNA, and then it will go through the ribosome, and the ribosome will have an exit tunnel. Here we will have a protein being formed from that peptide, and again, you will learn much more about this later. Here, this ribosome sits in something called the endoplasmic reticulum and actually attaches to the membrane. And this membrane has a channel that it's binding to. It's a very fascinating channel. It's a channel of a type that I bet you've never heard of. This is a protein channel. We don't really call it a protein channel. We call it a translocal. Uh, we know the structure of that since roughly 15 years. This is what it looks like from the side, and this is what it looks like from the top. And you can probably almost see, if you look at this one from here, there is a hole there in the middle. What happens then depends on the helix and how hydrophobic it is. If this is a very hydrophilic helix, it's going to slide straight out and end up here. And this is actually going to be the inside of the cell. But if it's a very hydrophobic residue, the interior of the translocon here is moderately hydrophobic, so then it's going to stay there for a while. And then magic happens. That magic is that if you're looking here between the blue and the green helix in the middle there, that entire translocon channel can open up that way. And if this channel opens up, what will happen is that this helix, again, if it's hydrophobic enough, can diffuse out in the membrane, one helix at a time. Gunnar will likely tell you much more about this, but once we've done that, the next question is how will they stabilize each other and how will we ensure that this helix is stable in the membrane? For instance, a helix with some charges or something, how can it end up there? Let's have a closer look at that. 